Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to tonight's Board of Ed meeting and thank you those few who came on this snowy evening. The date is Tuesday, March 13th, 2018. I want to remind you this meeting is being recorded and please turn off all cell phones. Ellen, can you please do our roll call? Sure. Mr. Cassio? Present. Mrs. Fitzpatrick? Present. Mr. Healy? Here. Ms. McCurdy? Here. Ms. Moon? Mr. Morris? Here. Mrs. Paradise? Here. Vice Chairperson Mr. Hill? Here. Chairperson Mrs. Granado? Present. And Weathersfield High School Student Representative Mr. Justin Bianchi? All present. Okay, thank you, Ellen. All right, should we all stand and face the flag? Okay, we're moving along, and I understand we have no student or staff recognition tonight. Kept everyone home. Um, so next on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the regular Board of Ed meeting on February 27, 2018. Are there any corrections? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, those minutes are approved. Also on tonight's agenda is the approval of the minutes of the Special Board of Ed meeting on February 22nd, 2018. Any corrections? Okay, is there a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. A second? Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? <coughs> okay, those minutes are approved. And finally, as part of this agenda is the approval of the minutes of the other Special Board of Ed meeting on March 1st, 2018. Are there any corrections? Okay, a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? But those minutes are approved. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium and state your name and address. And may I remind you that the public <coughs> comments are limited to five minutes. Okay, Mr. Emmett, do you have communication to share? I certainly do. Uh, thank you, uh, Mrs. Granado. Good evening, everyone. Uh, today marked the seventh snow day of the 2017-18 school year. Uh, this now moves the end of the 17-18 school year to Friday, June 22nd. Uh, at this point in time, graduation also looks to be on the 22nd as well. Um, the board will set that date after April 1st. Um, I have received multiple inquiries as to what happened to me last Thursday. Uh, for those of you listening to my uh, message, you noticed that uh, it was a robocall last Thursday. Uh, I was not trying to emulate uh, Newington's Rhonda, the robocaller. Uh, rather, I lost power at home uh, and did not have Wi-Fi, and my hotspot signal was too weak to uh, connect online. As part of our closing protocol, I'm in contact with colleagues at Central Office throughout the morning prior to making the decision. So. Um, Keith Raffanello stepped up and was able to get the message out on my behalf. Um, I am certainly hopeful that this uh, is the last snow day today in what has been a pretty miserable winter season. Uh, the latest snowstorm has forced us to reschedule the board retreat originally scheduled for tomorrow. Uh, that's been rescheduled to uh, March 28th. Um, our presenter is actually out in eastern Massachusetts and clearly unable to travel at this point in time. This will require that uh, we reschedule the meeting of the Policy and Planning Committee in order to facilitate that. Uh, winter sports are now winding down. Uh, the Boys Swimming Championship is tomorrow. Warm-up is at 5.15. Competition begins at 6 o'clock at Wesleyan University down in Middletown. Last night, both uh, boys and girls basketball teams were eliminated from their tournaments. Uh, the boys falling just short to Glastonbury at the high school and the girls uh, falling short against Farmington over in Newington last evening. Uh, we'll be recognizing the fall and winter teams at an upcoming Board of Education meeting. 
Also want to uh, let everyone know that tomorrow being the national uh, walkout day, um, we have a couple of events that are scheduled both at Weathersfield High School as well as at Silas Dean. Um, and I want to actually read the messages that came out both from Mr. Moore as well as Ms. Zaplin. Uh, Mr. Moore states that uh, Wednesday, March 14th marks the one month uh, anniversary of the horrific shooting in Parkland, Florida. The school officers have come together to sponsor a memorial vigil for the victims. Originally, the students were going to use Catone Field as the venue, but our New England weather has made that impossible. Um, the combined class officers of all four grades at WHS are conducting this vigil uh, for the Parkland shooting victims. The event will be held between 10 and 1017 tomorrow morning at Weathersfield High School Gymnasium. This vigil is a non-political uh, event and will consist of a remembrance of the victims, a song by the WHS Choral Airs, and a few short student speeches. Students are signing up in order to be excused from class and all other students, if they so choose, will remain in their classes with their teachers. Uh, Mr. Moore has uh, sent out a Google form which allows um, students to sign up and it will be disseminated to teachers. And at Silas Dean, um, Ms. Zappler reports she was approached by a very brave group of students that voiced their desire to pay respect to the families of the students and staff who recently lost their lives in the shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. Together with the support of their peers and the SDMS staff, they have planned a vigil. Again, this vigil is not designed to take a political stance or argue the cause of this heartbreaking event, but it's to stand together at the Silas Dean School community and pause as we become the heart and voice of those who are no longer with us. We're extremely proud of the students planning this event. It is truly an opportunity for our students to find a voice and come together during such a tragic event demonstrating compassion and true citizenship. And it's interesting, I actually had the opportunity to be over at Silas Dean. Uh, this was a group of uh, six eighth grade students that actually presented to the staff and uh, were very eloquent in their, their plan and um, requested the support of staff, which is, which is going to happen. As parents and guardians, please discuss with your child their options on March 14th, as is the case at the high school, this is um, an option. Um, Ms. Zappler also reports that encouraging children to speak to their teacher or guidance counselor if they're struggling with what occurred in Parkland, Newtown, or um, even the event that's taking place tomorrow. Wrap your arms around the, your, stu your students and love them as they navigate through and try to make sense of something that is so incomprehensible. If you have any questions, please communicate with Ms. Fries or Ms. Zappler. So that'll be taking place tomorrow at Silas Dean. At the elementary level, uh, again, it's interesting. The elementary level, we're planning on business as usual. Um, the difficult piece at the elementary level is the fact that there are parents that have uh, kept their uh, students from this information and wish to carry on with the normal and, and regular day. Um, any parents that wish to have their children um, walk out are welcome to go to the, their school and use the appropriate protocol to sign your child out and are welcome to, to, to do so. I think the other piece that's important to remember here that it is a school day tomorrow, it is a day of learning, and um, we are trying to strike that balance between giving our students a voice and letting them be heard, which we certainly want to do, and also maintaining a safe environment uh, and a learning environment. So um, we're looking forward to um, giving the students that voice uh, tomorrow. Tonight you have uh, two action items before you. The first is for the cancellation of the regularly scheduled board meeting on April 10th. Uh, this is due to the meeting falling during the school vacation uh, where achieving a quorum is an extraordinarily difficult challenge. The second action item is the approval of the superintendent's proposed operating budget for the 2018-2019 school year. The motion before you includes a reduction of $274,337 from the budget presented to you on February 13th. This reduction has been made following board discussion at budget workshops held on February 22nd and March 1st. The proposed budget represents a 3.49% increase over the adjusted 2017-2018 operating budget. With that, it's communications. Okay, thank you, Michael. Any questions? Okay, uh, Chris? Uh, just briefly, uh, I just want to commend Mike and uh, all the staff for doing this uh, event tomorrow to commemorate the losses that were suffered in Florida. I think it's an excellent way to do it and uh, to keep the school day going, but also to encourage people to uh, come forward and show their feelings and thoughts. I think it's great and uh, the way it's not an easy thing to <coughs> certainly organize in the course of, of the day, but I, uh, I know there's a lot of things to navigate there and 
had a discussion with the chair about it, and I think it's, it sounds like a, an appropriate way to do the do this uh, issue uh, justice. That's all. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Di? Um, regarding graduation, um, is that a definite that it would be on Friday? Because you mentioned something in the Friday packet about the 180 versus the 182. Yes. I know we can't do it on Thursday, and I would not advocate that for this class. Um, so with this day today, that puts us at the 180? That puts us at the 180. Because what ends up happening is we've got the SAT day. Seniors don't go in for the SAT day. So that's one of the, the, the two days. Okay. Um, and then again, you brought the point up about graduation on Thursday. DMV stays open late. So we can't utilize Thursday. Yeah, so I would, I would yeah. not advocate it. This class has had to suffer through um, everything being canceled right in first grade for them. Mm -hmm. So I would not take the cove away from them unless it rained. Okay. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Okay, let's move on to our action items. Chris, would you please read motion 6A for us? It would be my pleasure. <laughs> I'll make a motion that um, move that the Weathersfield Board of Education cancel the regular meeting scheduled for April 10th of this year. Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Uh, Madam Chair, it says here that in the past, the board meetings of fall during the school recess have normally been canceled. The administration is recommending that the board cancels the regular Board of Education meeting scheduled for that date. Well, Sounds reasonable know. to me. It could snow, Chris. You don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? That motion passes. And Kevin, would you please read motion 6B for us? Happy to. Uh, move that the Weathersfield Board of Education approve the operating budget for the 2018-2019 school year as presented by the administration in the amount of $59,027,663. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Diane? I, um, I'm going to vote for this budget. However, I do want to go on the record as I'm very concerned that with some of the positions, albeit very few positions we're funding, that we don't have an ESL teacher. Um, I think that due to the increases that we've heard over the past couple of years of the number of kids that are coming in either bilingual or not even able to speak the English language and the impact it's having on um, our classrooms that the, the three teachers that we have are not able to handle it. And I think that um, adding another teacher would help those kids but would also help the kids in their classrooms because the teachers would not have to be faced with um, carrying the burden of the ESL teacher. So I personally would um, would not fund a media specialist at the high school, but would fund another ESL teacher. I, th I think that's really important. Okay, any other discussion? John? Thank you, Bobby. Um, I'll echo those remarks to Diane, but just keep in mind this is not new. The ESL position is not new to this year's budget. It's been in the budget for the last three, and we haven't done it. It's just going to get worse, so I think it's got to get on the radar again, and um, we just have to, you know, the culture and climate of Weathersfield is not going to change. It's just going to, there's going to be more needs in that particular uh, area. So we've had it on the radar for three years. This is, it'll be the fourth year next year if we don't do something about it. So just want to make part of that a record. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? Okay. All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion 6B passes. Okay, we'll move on to meetings held. Okay, we have our wellness committee on February 28th. Diane, can you speak to it? Um, we met several weeks ago for the first time. This is a new committee. 
Um, and we've decided to focus on three areas, um, bullying in the schools, use of phones um, in this new communication era, and school safety. So um, it was kind of an organizational meeting. We talked about what we wanted to look at. Um, John discussed um, some of the programs that the board staff um, wellness committee is looking at, and he'll be keeping us up to date at each of those meetings. Yeah, it was a good meeting. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Diane on that? All right, move on to the Memorial Day Parade Committee. John? Thank you, Bobby. Um, this year's theme of the parade was discussed and the consensus for the theme this year will be recognizing Wethersfield's first responders who have served their country and our community. Oh, good. So we're just you know reaching out and trying to um, go down the road and I think that's uh, that'll encompass a lot of different situations within our community. Uh, the, the committee at this point, uh, I was looking to select parade marshals of individuals to meet the criteria of the parade's theme. So we're looking uh, into um, our ambulance, fire, um, and uh, see what Great. we can find in that particular area. Um, the Memorial Day address speaker uh, is also hopefully going to be somebody from the community in that arena. So we're trying to keep it all together. Um, Dan Camilleri will be the master of ceremony again. Um, he would think about uh, relinquishing those roles soon, but we're not allowing him to do that. Good. The uh, parade <laughs> uh, bands have been uh, contacted and invited the Weathersfield High School, the Governor's Foot Guard, Colonel John Chester, Fife and Drum, Buckley, Windsor, Fife and Drum, and uh, you know we're we're well ahead of the game this year. So it's even though we don't have a committee chair because uh, uh, Larry Spellacy used to be the chair. So uh, at this point, the committee as a whole is the entire chair of the group. Um, we have uh, reached out to the eighth grade uh, students at Silas Dean Middle School with the essay contest and uh, through Sally Gastoli. And there was discussion about inclusive of the elementary school this year, Good. but it was in the past. So we're working on some thoughts and ideas on how to uh, get all the uh, elementary uh, schools involved this year as well. What we're gonna do at this point, it uh, has not been determined. We are also uh, working on a Facebook page. So I think that is uh, new to the parade committee and uh, we're just looking to the town manager at this point to see whether or not it is uh, possible for us to do something of that nature mm -hmm. with a Memorial Day parade. And our next meeting is gonna be May 28th. So we're good. Great, any questions for John? Okay, thank you. Next is WEC which is our Weathersfield Early Childhood Collaborative, and it's great to have so many people with the same objective in WEP, which is to making sure that all Weathersfield children, birth to eighth, are healthy, developmentally successful learners and connected to the community. So we met yesterday, led by Kim Bobbin. She discussed the search for an accountability coordinator to be hired with the grant money from the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. Also discussed was the Early Collaborative uh, early Childhood Collaborative Network meetings organized by the Hartford Foundation. Michael, Kim, and I attended and will continue to attend, which is great a great networking time for us. Um, PEP continues for the second year. This program, People Empowering People, is on its seventh session with a group of 10 people working to be future leaders in our community. And there was an update on the summer transition to kindergarten program and um, interesting discussion on the idea of a kindergarten summer camp with a social emotional focus for incoming kindergartners. The Madres Latinas are continue to work for our community and they are focusing on creating welcoming packets and inviting members to join. And then finally, we have our Finance and Information Committee. Kevin, you Thank just you left. Chair. Yeah, we just left uh, prior to this meeting. 
Um, initially, we discussed the um, how we're running on our 2017-2018 budget. Uh, currently, we are, have a projection of $62,000 over budget. Um, all said and done with our, the size of our budget, it is you know, minor fluctuations, but we, do, we are expecting to hit our number uh, by the end of the fiscal year. Um, with that um, in place, uh, one of the fluctuations is due to our, we still have a spending freeze in place. Uh, that's a savings of almost over $300,000, but with that becomes you know, so, some pain to our district. I mean, this is instructional supplies, professional development, technology, and of course, maintenance. Um, uh, it's, it's something that hits our schools. Um, we also discussed the reductions that we voted on today in our um, administrative budget. Um, it's a $275,000 reduction overall that brings us to 3.49% increase. Uh, the reductions are VOAG and technical uh, school transportation of $100,000, uh, reduction of $80,000 in our insurance rate. Um, various positions in our business office and our director of maintenance and Medicaid reimbursement were the big ticket items. Um, and that was, a, like I said, a $275,000 reduction. It now goes over to uh, the town council uh, where they'll have an opportunity to, um, to weigh in. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Kevin? Okay, we'll continue moving on to our meeting schedule we do have a special board of ed meeting which is our retreat and that's rescheduled for march 28th at 5 30. student program and services committee on march 20th at 6 30. correct council which is on the 21st of march at 11 30. academy advisory committee which is on march 26th at seven o'clock at the media center in the high school and Finance and Information Committee on 327 at 6 o'clock. Is there any unfinished business? Okay. Is there anyone wishing to make a public comment? Please come on up to the podium. State your name and address. Oh, you ha I, I just have a question that maybe Mike can clarify for the public. Um, on Facebook, there was a question that because some towns are taking away April vacation already. When do we start taking away April, or if we do? I don't know, Mike, I just, I just thought you could answer that for, for the public address. Yeah, we have, we have. <laughs> in, in, our, in our calendar, we have uh, emergency snow days that take us right out until the 28th of June. So um, in the past, we had looked at reducing um, April vacation. Uh, that was hugely unpopular yeah. among everybody that was traveling, both you know, mm -hmm. families, students, and staff. So we've built in the emergency days uh, at the end okay. of the year. So right now at this point, as I mentioned before, we're at uh, Friday the 22nd okay. of June as the last day of school. We have one additional week. Okay, thank you All for right. the clarification. You're welcome. Thanks. Anyone else with any unfinished business? Okay, so we'll go back to anyone wishing to make a public comment. Please come on up to the podium, state your name and address, and may I remind you that you have a five minute limit. Okay. Are there any board comments? John? Thank you, Bobby. I just wanted to reassure the board they all received the vision and mission statement in their Friday packet. I hope you've looked it over. Mm -hmm. and, Strategic uh, plan is there, to, too. Yeah. Ready to go forward with uh, our retreat on mm -hmm. the 20th. Bobby, I'm sure, is going to have a lot more to say, but I just wanted to bring that to the table. Just, just for clarification, John, I have the old one to run off to, and this is quite different than the old one. Correct. I, I compared them. Uh, so I think Bobby may mention in her comments what yeah. the difference is in okay. the old one to Maybe the new one. Do you want to do that, right. Bobby? Well, actually, I'd be more prepared after our retreat, but yeah, the difference is we sent it out for staff input. Mm -hmm. We sent it out for public that's input. Yep. And then also um, a couple of great recommendations by the Hartford Foundation for WEC. So all those were put in. Well, I happen to like the newer model only because it's very clear. It's very succinct for me. I like things that are mm -hmm. that way. And so there's a goal and there are things that come below it and there's a vote and that. So mm -hmm. for me, it was well prepared, the second one. So good. Anyone else? Okay. Well, I'll have some closing comments here on other important meetings that um, either I attended or happened. I attended the Keene for Kids Coalition meeting on March 1st. We again congratulated Judy Keene on her CAS Award, which is given a recognition for the Keene Foundation doing so much for our community. 
The meeting also discussed the successful after school program, Saturday basketball, and the upcoming Kids Day on April 11th, that's during spring vacation. Brooke Berry, our head librarian, discussed winter reading, the April book sale, and looking for books, the teen program, love this one, the April poetry slam, and the 235th anniversary of a library in Wethersfield. That's awesome. Um, Park and Rec is part of this Keen for Kids, and they're organizing now for their summer programs. Social Services and the Hunger Action Group are working in collaboration. Southstein Middle School also contributed to the food bank through a contest. Um, the seventh graders won and get to watch March Madness during their lunch break. Central Connecticut Health Group is working on the Walking Works, a competition among towns for walking. And Putting on Airs is a program for asthma prevention. And there was discussion on the prevention, response, and recovery for opioid addiction. Um, I also attended the Weathersfield Hunger Action Team for the first time on March 9th, and there there was discussion again about our food pantry collections, community building education with businesses, and increasing participation in school-based meal programs, and there was a presentation, and Polly's talked about this quite often, by teacher Emily Hayward on the very successful King Arthur flour baking and distribution by the Silas Dean Middle School students. And on May 5th, there's the Foods 35th Annual Walk Against Hunger. Um, and finally, I had the pleasure of watching an incredible Broadway-like performance of Fiddler on the Roof by the Weathersfield High School actors. The board wants to thank all involved and a shout out to director teach, teacher um, Jeff Rhodes for an incredible job. And as Michael mentioned, a cheer for our athletes and coaches who continue to make us proud with their athleticism and sportsmanship. Watched the girls' basketball team yesterday play <coughs> a great tournament game against a very strong Farmington group who were all much taller than five feet four inches, but lost, the Eagles lost in the final minutes, but they continue to make us so very proud. Um, and with that, any other comments? Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? John, a second? Second. John, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Any abstentions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all and good night.